G'day cobblers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockout's 4 Wheel Driving, we're starting part one of the Arduino course for four-wheel drivers. Never programmed a thing in your life? Don't know all that much about electronics, but still have hankering to turn off your camp lights from inside your swag using a mobile phone app and Bluetooth that you've created? Well, this is exactly the course for you. You don't even need an Arduino to get started. First up, a little bit of Arduino history. Now, back in 2005, which isn't all that long ago, at the Interaction Design Institute Iveria, in Italy, as pictured here, this development team consisting of Gianluca, the two Davids, Tom and Lita Massimo, constructed an economical microcontroller development board for the use of their students. Little did they know that this prototype, where you can actually see Massimo's name etched into the board, would become the worldwide phenomenon it is today. And after the proof of concept, along came low volume production. And you can see in this iteration here, it has through hole componentry as opposed to SMDs or surface mount devices and a serial port as opposed to USB for communication until today. Now the most popular Arduino today is the R3 Uno. Now the great thing about Arduino is its business model and that is open source hardware. What does open source hardware mean? Well it means Mr. Multinational or Mr. Bloke in his bedroom can make their own version of Arduino. They can't call it an Arduino, but they can make an Arduino compatible device and sell it on the open market. As long as any development goes back to the community. And that's a fantastic thing about an open source hardware business model. Now let's have a look at the difference between the Arduino and what's considered its competitor, the Raspberry Pi. Firstly, the Arduino, open source hardware. And I've explained the benefit of that before. No operating system, so it doesn't run Windows, it doesn't run Mac OS, it doesn't run Linux. It's cheaper, so your project costs will be cheaper because the hardware is cheaper. It's more power efficient, so the power usage of the Arduino is less than a Raspberry Pi, and it's also able to run on 6 to 20 volts DC, which is fantastic if your car runs on 12 volts. It has 14 GPIO, so it's input-output pins, and six dedicated analog inputs, which we'll get into the benefit of later. The programming language, well, you're primarily stuck with the one programming language, unless you hack it, of C or one of the derivatives. The CPU, 16 megahertz, and has 32 kilobytes of flash memory, which can be a limiting factor if your program is getting very, very, very large. <laughs> you must use the supplied IDE, assuming, again, you haven't hacked it. And it's essentially, it's a microcontroller development board. It's not a computer as opposed to the Raspberry Pi. That's a computer. This is a microcontroller development board. Now, let's have a look at the Raspberry Pi. Now, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi, because of this Broadcom chip here, is not open source hardware. That chip is proprietary, and you can't use it without a licensing agreement with Broadcom. So not anyone can manufacture their own version of a Raspberry Pi. It runs the Linux operating system, which is great for more complicated programs, not so great for reliability. It's more expensive. Again, as I was saying before, these are slightly more expensive, and that increases your total project cost. It's USB-C powered, but it needs to be 3 amp USB-C powered, which is convenient and inconvenient at the same time. It has 40 I.O. pins, but it has zero analog pins, unlike the Arduino, which has six analog pins. You can use pretty much any programming language that you're familiar with on the Raspberry Pi. Python, Java, C, etc., etc., etc. They're all compatible with the Raspberry Pi. The CPU runs at 1.8 gigahertz versus the 16 megahertz of the Arduino Uno, and it has eight megabytes of onboard RAM with an SD card for memory. Now, when it comes to IDE or the integrated development environment, you have a variety of choices, Idle, Jenny, Thony, so on and so forth. So whatever IDE you're familiar with, perhaps you've used before in a different environment, you can probably use that with the Raspberry Pi. And finally, it is essentially a small computer. You can plug a couple of monitors, 4K monitors no less, into the HDMI outputs, a mouse, a keyboard, and you're right to go. You can actually run word processing programs on this little computer. It is a little computer, as opposed to a microcontroller development board. So it's horses for courses. If you've got something really complicated, well, Raspberry Pi will be your choice. If you have something reasonably simple, you want to control the lights around camp from your phone, well, Arduino will be your choice there. So what's on the board? Firstly, your power input. Now that can be powered, like I said before, anywhere in between six and 20 volts DC, so ideal for car applications. This is the USB-B. Now the USB-B is a little bit unusual. 
In the latest iteration, however, they've moved over to USB-C. But you don't need both plugged in at the same time to run the Arduino microcontroller. You can either have it plugged into power or USB-B. Works either way. Reset button. So we all know what a reset button does. It resets the Arduino. <laughs> We have a ground, of course, or a negative. We have digital I.O. pins. We have 14 of those. Six of those are PWM outputs. So what I mean by that is it's able to do it with pulse width modulation. If you want to control the brightness of an LED, if you want to control, let's say, the speed of a motor, PWM or pulse width modulation is exactly how you do it. Now, one of the digital pins, pin 13, has an LED output. So when this pin goes active or high, it actually illuminates this LED as well. So you don't need anything attached to it in order to start programming and that's how we'll be doing our first program this is the microcontroller here and it's 18 mega 328 doesn't mean too much at the moment doesn't really matter <laughs> the analog inputs and these are important for sensors this is the one major advantage of the arduino over the raspberry pi if you have sensor inputs from a, a light sensor or a temperature sensor or something like that this is where those inputs go and finally the power so things like ground 5 volts 3.3 volts so on and so forth and that's an overview of what's on the Arduino development board. Now let's download the IDE, or the Integrated Development Environment. So head into your favourite web browser, head into your favourite search engine, and type Arduino. Now you'll probably see a hyperlink to the software there, so click on that. Now you can download for your machine. I'm running a Windows machine here, so Windows 10 or newer. Now if you haven't contributed before, I suggest you contribute, but I'm just going to download this time. Now it's downloaded, open it up and run the file. Of course, the old next, 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 yes, yes, yes. Now with that done, let's press finish and run the Arduino IDE. Now you're going to have to select your particular Arduino. So I'll just plug the USB in, and there we go. And if it doesn't come up here, you're going to have to select it. So it tells me the Arduino is actually on COM4, beautiful, and we're basically now ready to program. But for those of you who haven't managed to get your Arduino as yet, there are simulators, so we'll have a look at that now. And the simulator we're using is Autodesk Tinkercad. Now you will have to sign in, and I use my Google credentials to sign in. Once you've done that, you'll land on this page. Then we go create a circuit, and we wait for it to load up. And here we are in the simulator. Now on the left hand side here you can see a variety of components, electronic components, one of them being the Arduino Uno R3. So we'll click once on that and then we can click in the work area and we can drag that Arduino in the middle there. Now let's name it something. Inventively, let's name it Uno. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're ready to start coding. So let's head into the code. Now by default it comes up with this block coding which we won't be looking at for the moment and we'll change it over to text, because that's the same as the Arduino IDE. Now it's got by default a blinking LED code in there, which we're going to get rid of because we don't want it. We don't want to cheat. We want to learn. We're here to learn. Okay. All right, now, when it comes to programming, we have the void setup, and then we have the void loop. The void setup is setting up the initial parameters, and the void loop is actually the meat of the program where we get to repeat the code. So it goes from top, right down through the bottom, through the code, and then goes back up to the top and just keeps repeating and repeating as long as it's plugged in to either the USB or power. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to illuminate this LED which is connected to pin 13. And we need to set that up. And the way we do that is we go pin mode. Now you'll notice the unusual capitalization there. It needs to be just like that, otherwise it doesn't work. Now, what pin do we want to specify? is pin 13 and what we want to do that do we want to make it an input or an output we want to make it an output to illuminate that led so output all in capitals we need to close bracket and then we need a semicolon now you'll notice the ongoing trend of the semicolon you're going to wear that button out ladies and gents <laughs> there will be lots and lots of semicolons just about after every line of code right here now we can go into the loop section after we specified pin 13 being an output and what do we want to do? Well, we want to turn it on. And the way we do that is we put in digital right, digital right, with the unusual capitalization again, open bracket, and then which pin again? Pin 13. And what do we want to do with that? We want to turn it on. And another way to say on in digital is high, H-I-G-H, all in capitals again, close bracket, 
What are we missing now? That's right, we're missing the semicolon. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just written your first program. Let's start the simulation and let's have a look what happens. Now, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, consider subscribing to the channel and ring that bell icon so you don't miss out on the future videos in this series. If you want to help support the channel, well, you can become a patron on Patreon and get early ad-free access to videos in this series just like this one. Now, if you haven't already got yourself an Arduino, well, there's a link down the doobly-doo. It's an affiliate link, so whilst it won't cost you any more, it'll help support the channel creating future content just like this. Anyway, back to the episode. So starting the simulation, and what happens to that LED? We have turned it on, absolutely fantastic. Congratulations, your programming career has just started. But it's not very exciting, is it? <laughs> okay, in the next session, we're gonna learn how to turn it off and then back on again. So let's stop that simulation and modify that code. So if we manage to turn this LED on at pin 13 with digital right pin 13 high, how are we gonna turn it off? <laughs> In a very similar fashion. So we'll just copy that and let's paste it below. There we go. Now what's the opposite of high? Well, the opposite of high, of course, is low. So let's write that in all capitals again. Digital write high will turn it on and digital write low will turn it off. Start the simulation. Let's check out what happens. There we go. The simulation is now running and it's just on all the time. What's the issue? Well, the issue, of course, is the microprocessor is much faster than us. It is turning on and off, but very, very, very quickly. Faster than our brains can comprehend. So we need to put in delays. So let's stop the simulation and put in a delay. And the command, surprisingly, is not cryptic at all. It's just delay. But it's in milliseconds, so there's 1,000 milliseconds to one second. So let's delay it for 1,000 milliseconds. And don't forget that semicolon. So now we're turning it on and we're waiting for one full second. Then we're turning it off and we're going back to turning it on. But we're not fast enough to register that. So we need to turn it off for a period of time too. So let's delay that as well. Delay, open bracket, 1000 milliseconds or one second, and then our semicolon. Okay, let's start the simulation and see what happens. On for one second and off. And back on for one second and off. And back on for one second and off. It's working fine, but it's pretty boring though. <laughs> it is though, your first program that actually does anything besides just turn the LED on. It turns it off and then it turns it back on again. Okay, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's change the amount of time that our LED is on. So how would we do that? First, we need to stop the simulation and we'll copy and paste that whole section of code. You can see there's a lot of copy paste going on here. So we'll just uh, go back to the start again, feed my OCD, there we go. So we need to turn it on for how long? Oh, let's do it half the length. Let's change it from 1000 to 500, but we'll leave the delay at one second. So let's start the simulation and see what happens. On for half a second, off. On for one second, off. On for half a second, off. Beautiful, okay, that's working. Now we're gonna move back to the super starter kit for the Uno R3 and do it in the physical real world. And now we're in the Arduino IDE with exactly the same program with a couple of small differences. You've noticed I've put in a few comments here. So after digital write pin 13 high, what it says is it's turn the LED on. And after digital write pin 13 low, it says turn the LED off. Basically you can't over comment. <laughs> Once you put in those two backslashes, put in a description because when you go to modify the code, perhaps years down the track, well, then you'll know exactly what you're on about. You also notice digital write, delay, pin mode, loop, etc., are all highlighted red, and that means it's an Arduino specific command. Beauty, okay. So we've written our program. Let's put it into the Arduino. So you'll see on the Arduino at the moment, well, the LED isn't illuminated. So what we do is press the go button up the top here. It compiles a sketch. And then once it's compiled and there's no errors, which hopefully there won't be, it sends it to the Arduino. And now you can see it's flashing on long and then it's flashing on short and flashing on long and flashing on short. 
we're working. We're working fantastically. Okay. Now, until the next episode is released, here's your task. What I want you to do is get that light flashing SOS for me in Morse code. Now, those who aren't familiar with Morse code, well, Morse code is the way we used to communicate back in the day, sometimes still used by amateur radio operators, and it's a sequences of dots and dashes. Now, the dots, well, that can be represented by the LED on for 1,000 milliseconds, and the dashes can be represented by the LED on for 300 milliseconds or three seconds. Now, the way to write SOS is dot, 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 dash, 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 and then dot, dot, dot. Now, the first one to put in the correct answer of the code in the comment section, I'll send you out a sticker. <laughs> and I'll be checking it. And please, don't cheat. Don't use chat GTP. Or if you're an experienced programmer, a software engineer, give the other guys a chance. Alright guys, now if you've liked this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one.